Welcome to the Songwriter Connection, the podcast that delves deep into the art and heart of songwriting. Each week, we gather around the dining room table to uncover the stories behind the songs. We invite you to join us on a journey to the creative minds of the songwriters who shape the melodies of our lives. From Nashville, Tennessee, here's your host, Dave Lenahan. It's episode 166. We're to the end of July already. The summer is just flying right on by, and we hope that you're enjoying it. And we're still on that mission, one million. By the end of this summer, we're going to be a million downloads and streams of the Songwriter Connection podcast. And that's all thanks to you spreading the word, hitting that like button and subscribe, telling folks all about it. We've got a great artist and songwriter today, uh, and, and we're going to we're going to talk a little co- country music. And I know what you're saying. You. You, you just said a genre, Dave, country music. But, um, yeah, I did, and I don't like genres. You know what I, I, how I feel about that. But this is a great story. We have British country music today. From across the pond, we have Brooke Ellingworth from the Oxford Ellingworths, right? <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds so proper and great. I love it. It does. It's very British sounding, right? <laughs> uh, you're from Oxford, and that's, what, about a two-hour drive west of London? Uh, no, it's like an hour. About an hour? It's like, yeah, it's like an hour northwest. Uh-huh. Yeah? Did yeah. you spend a lot of time in London? or I do, yeah. 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 Um, gigging mainly. Gigging. And you've been gigging since you were like 11 years old, I read. Yeah. 11? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us how that came about. First gig at 11. Um, <laughs> and you're like, what, 20, 25, 24? 25. 25? Wow. Amazing. Um, that was, uh, that Old came pro. about, like... I live in like a tiny little town in the countryside. It's actually like a hamlet. It's that small. Really? Okay. And um, big musician town for some reason. Like some way, almost every family in the village has a musician in the family. Yeah. It's odd. And really, there's a um, there was this beers and blues festival um, in the village called Roke Fest uh-huh. that I sort of grew up with and um, cool. like went every year and. That's where I sort of found my love for guitar and uh-huh. found the inspiration to pick up a guitar when I was like eight. Uh-huh. I was playing for a few years and then, because um, everyone's neighbors, everyone's friendly, I got the opportunity to have my first gig at 11 there. Wow. That's amazing. You must have picked up that guitar mighty quickly. Oh, I did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's talent. I mean, you just pick up a guitar. Did you take lessons or did you just make oh, sense to you? I had I had lessons yeah. with um, a brilliant musician called Joff Winks. Uh-huh. Um, He's in a prog band called Sanguine Hum. Okay. Yeah. Not familiar. I, I haven't seen him in a few years, though, man. I need uh-huh. to catch up with him, grab a coffee. I grew up on, uh, you know, I'm quite a bit older than you, but I grew up on, on the Beatles music and a lot of the British invasion acts. That, mm-hmm. that, that, in fact, I wore my Who uh, oh, Quadrophenia know. shirt in your honor today. I was a big Who fan. Uh, but but you, you had a combination of country and rock, right? Yeah. And I guess both blend together became your genre, uh, the, the stuff that you do. Yeah, huh? I suppose, yeah. Yeah. Um, grew up with a lot of singer-songwriter stuff. Did you? And um, yeah, like Tim Buckley and Bob oh, yeah. Dylan. And, Dylan. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's loads of Springsteen. Yeah, I um, love Springsteen too. And then there was some harder sort of rock and roll going on. There was like a lot of like ZZ Top, mm-hmm. um, a Bon Jovi, and then my mum would always play uh, country music. Yeah, um, your mom was the country music fan. She was. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Country music is big in, in England, isn't it? Well, she is. Uh, yeah. It is. Yeah, is it? it's getting bigger and bigger like every year. That's great. Um, which is. Awesome! Like you see, all the, like all of the big cats come over mm-hmm. and do giant shows. And back, and book book these big arena shows and stadium yeah. shows and uh-huh. sell them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's festivals great. and all that. And uh, well, that's great. Yeah, it's a big deal over in the UK. It's getting. I was speaking to someone about it the other night actually, and mm-hmm. um, someone was telling me. I was chatting with a friend, and they were they were like, "It seems like over like the past like couple of years." There's, there's, there are more country fans, and like people are starting to come out of the woodwork a bit more. Like, like, like the people wow. that you'd like speak to or know or look at, and be just like they're not a country fan, or they've always but sort of, are. or they've, or they've always sort of hated on it. Yeah. Then they come out and they're just like, oh, I actually know this song, and I really like it. And it's, <laughs> you know, it's just like so. There are it is eight, eight people are starting to be more flexible with genres and Very what cool. they like. 
That's awesome. That's good to see that it's growing even there too. Mm. And of course, here in Nashville, it's it's crazy. You know, yeah, you've got all the bro bars and everything down there. Right, you're doing it right, my friend. You come into town quite a bit, and you still live uh, across the pond, but you make regular trips to Nashville. How long has that been going on? Um, first time I, I came out, it was 2018. 2018, and I think I did like a couple of trips that year. Did you? Um, yeah, and I that was a te- that was a Texas trip that year as well. And you make good use of your time while you're here. You do some co-writing. I do. And recording. And we're Uh going to get into that. And you play around a lot. I saw, um, I played at the local last week. And I saw that you were on the bill after me. And I couldn't stick around to see you because I was, it was a two for night. And I had to go. But I wanted to catch your show. I've I've seen you on on your YouTube channel and stuff. Yeah. Good performer. Thank you. How was it? Did you have fun? You did the freak show, right? I did do the freak show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The one that that Terry Joe puts on. Terry Joe, yeah. Yeah, that's hilarious that we were both on the same round. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I didn't even clock it. You were a few rounds after me. Yeah. uh, Yeah, I was very early. In the night, but uh, dude, I love I love playing writers rounds um, oh, in this town. Do they do that at home? Um, they don't. It's not really a thing. Not a thing. There's a couple uh-huh. that um, are starting to happen because country's getting so big. Yeah, um, yeah. there are definitely writers rounds that are starting to kind of the bluebird thing, play. right? It's yeah, good. yeah, you know, yeah. that's good. Um, yeah. I'm actually back at the freak show tonight. Are you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm there. Wow. I'm, 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 I'm 10 p.m. I'm like the last round. Okay. I try to make it out there tonight. Yeah, dude, you should. <laughs> hey, what day is today? Is today Wednesday? It is, all day. It's a, it's a Wednesday, all day, that we're taping it. And of course, with this this show always comes out on Wednesday mornings, mm. uh, so you can get up bright and early and make a new connection. Uh, our connection today is Brooke Ellingworth, and got it right this time. And you've got a new single out. I want to talk a little bit about the writing of that song. Sure. And we're going to get into the craft of songwriting and how you approach songwriting. But I want to play this song for uh, everybody. Tell us uh, about this song. Well, it came about through a moment an experience with someone that I had a moment in time and it dwelled on me for a long time and I had this chorus that I wrote um, August was it last year year before so 22 I think it was yeah 22 I think it was November time I had this chorus and then I sort of shelved it for a bit came back to it the following year and the song just fell out of me it, yeah yeah and it's about that first kiss that you have with somebody mm. that changes your life. N- not necessarily the first kiss ever, you know, when you like bump teeth with someone at school. <laughs> um, but the first real. But that first kiss that if it, you know, if it's with the person that you're with today, the person you're married to, or maybe it's the one that got away. Mm-hmm. Um, it's that kiss that sort of changed a lot for you. So much it's taking it back to that time. So many of my favorite songs just capture a moment like mm. that. So let's give it a listen. It's like it was the first time. It's Brooke Ellingworth <laughs> on this Songwriter Connection podcast. <laughs> Let me spin you around and kiss you like I did that night Like it was the first time Dancing like strangers do I wish I already knew That you were just passing through But nothing I could really do To save myself from falling For someone like you So take my heart for another round Shoot me straight, don't water me down Look through me Just you and me in the stratosphere Let me 
Well crafted and very well produced. Our guest Brooke Ellingworth on the Songwriter Connection podcast. What a great song! And is this Thank one you, you recorded at, at Curb? Records? It is. Yeah. Okay. You've been recording at Curb Records here in Nashville. It's crazy. That's nuts. It's crazy. That's wonderful. <laughs> Tell us about how that came about and that experience. Um, how did it come about, man. It was. Uh, I was having a porch beer with this guy that I was staying with in East Nashville, uh-huh. and he had his neighbor over, uh-huh. and. Um, I met him briefly, and then about a week later, there was the Lockland Table anniversary party that I do every year over in East Nashville. Okay. And they like had like a street party going on, and I was I was like cruising around on this like beach chopper bicycle, nice. and um, came across this, and I was sort of just like cycled through it, and this guy was sat there with a cooler, and it was the guy from the porch, who's uh, Jake Burns. And oh. we became friends pretty quick, and uh, we cut my first record together. Wow. He's um, the engineer, producer? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, well, both. both. We, uh, co- yeah. we co-produced together. That's awesome. And yeah, he's the, um, he's the studio engineer and the mixing engineer. And yeah, we did the first, we did the Die Balls and Heartbreaks EP over at Loud, okay. um, where, you know, James Stroud used to be. Yep. And um, so that's where Jake's at. Okay. And then, uh, then I came back last year and cut and cut a couple of singles. Wow. And he was working over at Curb <laughs> uh, because they were doing some renovations. So then, yeah, he's he's, yeah. he's also at Curb. Curb's What's now the... taken over Loud, and mm-hmm. yeah, it's, um, with some amazing musicians, uh, the best, the best. Yeah. yeah, yeah, these guys are incredible to watch, aren't they? It blew my mind the first time I did it. The, foot, the as, well, actually, the first time I saw him play, I just sat in on a session, mm-hmm. uh, just to sort of get a groove for it. Uh-huh. Uh, Jake invited me along, and he was just like, "Hey, just come and hang out." Yeah, went and hung out, and I was like, "These what? these guys are piece, these guys are piecing songs together in like forty minutes." Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Done. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, and sounds incredible. If if you're a songwriter and you're ready to do some like bring it to the next level, like a demo, I really recommend you come to Nashville. And get that demo experience here mm. with some of these amazing musicians. They do they chart them out, and I remember the first time that I came into the studio and, and, and was doing that. I was was just watching yeah. a, a demo. Um, these guys look at the charts, they listen to the song on a work tape, yeah. and they make out some notes, and then they go in that studio and play it like they've been playing it their entire life. Exactly. And you're writing like thirty minutes, forty yeah. minutes. It's down there. It is blows my vocals. mind. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. It, it's it really is it's something and especially when like the songs are so different like yeah. one off the other off the other and they're like yep. utterly yep. different yeah it's amazing and you have your own band at home too I do, yeah. so um 
and it's that's it's still a different. I mean, these guys I'm sure are fantastic, and you're used to playing with them, mm. and now you're in a whole new situation with different players, and it's a different field, isn't it? It's it is something else. <laughs> the it is something hard else. to explain. I love it. It, it yeah. is. Yeah. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they are that talented. Let's talk about your songwriting voice and, and when you discovered it and um, how you first started writing. I know you were playing out at age 11. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I was, I, was, I was in like rock bands throughout my teens and all that were sort you? of stuff. Yeah. And uh, we did like a bit of writing here and there. And mm-hmm. um, I, did, I did a lot of it when I was at college. Yeah. Uh, I was doing music at college in Oxford. And that's actually how I know my bass player and guitarist back home. <laughs> now, were you, did you go to Oxford? I'm just had to ask. <laughs> Where'd you go to college? Uh, it was Oxford. It was? Okay. Yeah. Oh, my God. Wow, okay. I, and I was joking. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you studied at Oxford? I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we have college, which is like after high school. You do, co- you do t- two years of college after high school, okay. which we call secondary school. And then you, okay. and then after college, you then go to university, okay. which is what you'll call college. Ah. Um, so, it's, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was at Oxford for two years, and I went to London for about seven months. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so we did a lot of writing then, but I think it was probably about 20, it's probably like end of 2017. Mm-hmm. That I found my songwriting voice. Yeah. And I'm talking different from your voice voice, singing voice. Which, by the way, you have just the right amount of gravel in your voice. I love it. <laughs> Boy, you, I tell you, you got a good voice. But your songwriting you. voice, that's when yeah. I first discovered it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, it, was, it was, I don't know, about uh, five or six months after I found my, my, my singing voice, I suppose. Mm. Um, I was never a front man. No, I was always a lead. Really? Guitar. I was I was always like a lead guitar player and backing vocals. That was it. How the front man kind of come along? I fell into it. You fell into <laughs> it. I tripped. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like Bev. <laughs> Bev, your publicist is with us today. Oh my gosh! Sorry, Bev. She broke her ankle not too long ago. Oh, we love that you're here though, and all the great things you do. Um, <laughs> broke. So, you wrote this last song by yourself. I so imagine coming to Nashville. Solo, right? yeah. yeah, did you do a lot of solo right back home? That's all I really ever knew. Ever did? That's all I really ever knew. And then I think it was, yeah, when I when I came here in twenty two, uh-huh. so just after COVID, uh, I started co writing with some people. Now, and that's it was so that's a different experience, isn't it? I mean, here in Nashville, yeah. we do a lot of co writing. Yeah. And was it hard at first to open your heart and soul to other writers? Uh, yeah, it definitely took me a minute, and mm-hmm. I feel like every co-writer I do, I'm still learning. Are you? Um, What's my, yeah, I feel are. like yeah. every songwriter does, like every art room you're in with, every time. Other, with different musicians, you're always picking up on everyone's energy and everyone's process of how they go about things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it took me, it took me, a, it took me a few writes to sort of get like a grip of mm-hmm. it. Yeah, and but at first when I came into town, I was doing some writers' rounds and stuff. Um, I got asked a lot by some other musicians. They were like, who did you write this with? Mm. I'm like, uh, nobody. Really? I was like, yeah. And yeah. they were like, what? <laughs> and I, was, I, was, I was so confused. And then, I, a found, and then I found out it was a, yeah. the Nashville was such a big songwriting town. Yeah. Like, did you uh, get a lot of, we should write sometimes. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. And only about 20% of the people follow that up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you're right. <laughs> I see that you write a lot with Greg Crow. Uh, I do. Greg, yeah. Greg every Monday nights at the local with uh, Dave Gibson, who's been on the right. show. And I interviewed Greg uh, years ago in Cincinnati. Oh, you did? Yeah, he used to come up to NSAI a lot. And I did a little TV show called uh, Nashville Songwriter Connection. So whenever these <clears throat> songwriters would come up, we would put them on our little TV show. Yeah. And uh, Greg's, Greg's <laughs> we called there was daytime Greg Crow. There was daytime Crow and nighttime Crow is what we used to say. <laughs> Two different people. <laughs> it seems pretty much all daytime crow these days, though. Settled him in. Nice family. Yeah. Uh, but he's an awesome musician and songwriter. Oh, dude, he's great. He was he was one of the first people I co-wrote with. Was he? Um, yeah. Oh, and did you meet at the local? These guys? No, we met. Um, I booked his Airbnb. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. He's got an Airbnb. Yeah, that's and great. that's how we met. Wow. And then, and then yeah, then he invited me to play at the local. We started co-writing stuff, and we... We co-wrote about three songs together. Well, that's great. That's good. Who are you writing with mostly these days? Just uh, 
yourself or other people that you like to write with? Oh, I'm always I'm always working on new songs by myself always. all the time. Which good but, to get um, started on that. Yeah. 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 Um, every time I come over here, I'm always writing with a guy called Jason Rettig. Um, Jason Rettig. Good friend of mine. Mm-hmm. We've written some great songs together. Uh, I just actually have... I think I've cut everything that we've written okay. together. Wow. And, um, That's great. I'm also doing a lot of co-writing with my buddy back home. Um, he's an Aussie artist. He's called Hux. Okay. Wow. And uh, such a prolific songwriter. Yeah. He's amazing. And a uh, really good friend. And um, yeah, we're, ch- we're sort of churning out some really, really good stuff right now. Very good. I want to hear some of this stuff. You brought your guitar, Beautiful Gibson Hummingbird. Oh, great sound. Why don't you pick that thing up? Play us one that you wrote. Maybe your Cole wrote just one that you'd like to play and tell us the story behind. Sound good? That sounds good to me. Let's do that. All right. Reaching over. This is a beautiful guitar. And this has a name, by the way, this guitar. It does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her name is Barbara. Barbara. Named after? Named, named after uh, my godmother. Your godmother. Yeah. That's right. What a great story. Um, I'm going to play an unreleased one. Um, I'll be releasing it this year, uh, most likely this summer. It's called Road of Yesterday. Road of Yesterday. Solo or co? co? This was a co-write uh, with my buddy Jason Rettig. Okay. Who, you just talked Who about. I mentioned, and it's probably the hardest song I've ever had to write. Really? Why yeah. is that? Um, Subject matter? Or? Yeah. It's about, it's about going down memory lane. Okay. Good. You're going to take us on a little journey here. Yeah, I hope so. Here we go. Walking down the road yesterday Running circles round this room Just trying to keep me sane can't help but look back on the better days I had So much love, so much pain in an old photograph mm-hmm, yeah. It's the house on the left at the end of memory lane Still see you in my arms on that front porch swing Breeze in your hair and the sun on your face. It's memories like this that time can't erase. Cause I'm walking down the road of yesterday. I'm walking down the road of yesterday. Hand in hand with your ghost, just lead me on your way. Cause I'm walking down the road of yesterday. As I sit here all alone, pretending I'm okay. I can't help but stare right back at you in that frame. Hold you close to my heart Will I ever be the same Since you've been gone Will tears fall like rain Cause I'm walking down the road of yesterday I'm walking down the road of yesterday Hand in hand with your ghost, just lead me on your way. Cause I'm walking down the road yesterday.
walking down the road yesterday. I'm walking down the road yesterday. And hand in hand with your ghost, just lead me on your way. You'll always be a part of me. I know that. Cause I'm walking down the road yesterday I'm walking down the road of yesterday Wow. Walking down the road of yesterday. Man, do you soar on the end of that song? That's crazy. Absolutely love it. Thank you. Brooke Ellingworth is our guest. We're going to take a little break. When we come back, more. We're going to get another song or two out of you for sure. Don't go away. <laughs> You're listening to The Songwriter Connection with Dave Linehan. Find us on Facebook and YouTube at The Songwriter Connection Podcast. And find Dave at thedaveconnection.com. Now back to the show with your host, Dave Linehan. Brooke Ellingworth, who comes from England and does a lot of trips to Nashville and makes good use of that time, writing songs, getting in the studio over at Curb Records, uh, playing all around. And and I also see you make little trips like to Memphis you played and in Austin, Texas. Yeah. Wow. That's like a whole other country in Texas when you get there, isn't it? Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah, big time. <laughs> they got a whole different country chart and everything. And uh, it's different. It's, but I bet you had a blast. I love Texas. Yeah, did yeah. You, did you play there a bit? I did. Yeah, I played in. Um, I played in Austin. I made my Texas debut in twenty two. Yeah, how'd it go? It was great. It was great. Yeah, it was a. It was a blast. I have. Um, I have my good friend Rich Lockhart to thank for that. Wow. Okay. Thank you, Rich. Appreciate it. <laughs> hey, back here in Nashville, and uh, you're you come in like a month at a time, or how long do you? Yeah, stay? I try. And, yeah. I try and stay for about a month. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes sense if I'm. Oh. I'm coming this far, and you come back just, in the fall. Yeah, um, it's just trying to squeeze everything in. Man, it's, it's I mean, gotta be hard. I mean, like if, yeah. if if it was two weeks, it'd be exhausting. Right. I've been here four weeks. It's still exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get my sleep? I'm trying. Not enough. No. 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 Yeah. That's what the coffee's for. You can sleep when you get home. Exactly. Yeah. Sleep you can sleep when you're dead. You know that was saying. <laughs> I saw that you was it your first release was a live EP. There was you guys did? yeah. You and your band? No, it was it was just me and an acoustic in a room. That's it. Over here in Nashville with Jake Burns. No kidding. And uh, yeah, it was me, Jake, and uh, Greg helped produce it. And, wow. Uh, yeah, we had a um, we had a good old time on that. It was the first thing I'd ever released as a solo artist. And uh, there's video online, right? Uh, on YouTube? Is that? I, I saw a whole hour song uh, show live show of yours. Oh uh, yeah, there maybe is that a was live back in England somewhere. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. No, there's there's ton, there's tons of live stuff on there. Okay, but uh, that's what I must have been seeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you're uh, there on YouTube. Just look for you. We'll find you. Yeah. Uh, oh, that live session. That live wow, session. Wow, the RGB session. The RGB session. That was the I one. Know what you're on about. Uh, tell me about yeah. that. Uh, they're a great. They're a great company. They're based in London. Uh-huh. Uh, they reached out beginning of the year and asked if I could go in like a week later to just do this live session with them and it was just their YouTube channel and their company and wow RGB great promo for me their recording's fantastic how could you Um, go wrong yeah uh, the video was great Uh, the producers and editors on it were great great people all around Uh and we can find that on YouTube you have your own YouTube page yeah it's under Brooke Ellingworth Music Ellingworth Music and do you have a web page too that we can find you on Web page is in the process. In the process, okay. Yeah, um, I was I was hoping to have a bit of time this month to <laughs> right. play around with it. <laughs> no chance, right? I was so wrong. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. And it does take time. You have to sit down and force it yourself. Does, to do dude, it. So yeah. does social media. Yeah, Ben and I were talking about before you got here. Uh, there's so many social media outlets, and you feel like you got to... It takes hours. Yeah. It takes hours. It, it and I've, I've barely had time this trip to even do any, so I've just, I just create... I curate loads and loads of material and content, and then yeah, that will I will just be posting all over the summer. People will be just like, "Wait, are you playing in Oxford? Or are you playing in Nashville? Or how are you doing this?" No, I will be I will be back home. Yeah, do you have a TikTok then? Uh, uh, or do you do the TikTok? I do, but I stay away from it. Yeah, 
uh, I sort of I linked the Instagram to the TikTok so every the reel I put on Instagram it goes straight to TikTok I, oh, don't, I, don't, I don't even need to open that app yeah I want to talk about your songwriting style and uh, how you developed it and uh, okay. if you have any tricks of the trade or um, or is every song different every song's kind of different there's mm-hmm. no like I don't really have a like a template uh-huh um, Good. as such you know okay. uh, the idea is if it's if I get a riff I'll start with that I'll, mm-hmm. work, I'll work on that and I'll build up on that or usually it will be a line mm-hmm. um, or just a like a concept yeah I felt like a great um, a great exercise to work on your songwriting tools and to build that toolkit is to pick yourself a topic Mm-hmm. Like randomly like I did one at the beginning of the year I was writing with some buddies and we sort of had this like little challenge going on between us just to like you know keep our tool shop I'm this by the way and we did it weekly and it would be a one of us would stick up a topic we'd take it in turns one of us would stick up a topic per week wow be random like one day I put up like mode of transportation like transportation hubs okay. you know like a bus stop or a taxi rank or an airport or a mule and car. I don't know. It could have been anything. Yeah. And that's, that was the topic. It was just like, right, run with it. (laughs) And then like the next week would be like weather. I love it. Next week would be somewhere you can live. I'll I'll be darned. You know? And And just talk about what we can write with that. And yeah. And it's, it's mad to, to see what you come out with. And it's amazing. (laughs) Even if you hate the song, it's still a song, yeah, and right. you, it's, not, you did, like, it's not like you're going to be playing it your whole life. It's just another one that you've got in a back catalog. That's, you know that that is um, just a wonderful exercise. I love that. Do that, yeah, guys. And before I moved to Nashville, we would get together in Cincinnati. We'd call it breakfast in a hook. Breakfast in a hook. And I we'd, like that. We'd eat pancakes, and everybody would throw out song ideas, and then we'd pick one and go to someone's house and write it. So I love the fact that you're doing things uh-huh. like that to expand your creativity. Yeah. You know? Which is something you can work on, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah. And um, yeah, no, it is definitely something that I've kept doing. Now, do you find that you've got your songwriting antennas up all the time, trying to find different... I like, do. Yeah, yeah. Conversations. Yeah. Conversations, okay. man. I mean, like, especially with meeting new folks out here that are from places that I've never been or heard of or know anything about, and making friends and having conversations, I'm there just like, I'm not being rude, but... I'm just going to get my phone out and write that down. <laughs> I have to write what you just said now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I do it. I, I, I do it all the time. I do that all the time. I too. did. Dude, I had one the other day I thought was hilarious. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, I had two in one day and <laughs> the line was, she lives in Santa Fe. She lives in Santa Fe? And then the other line was $2 a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> $2 cigar. I love it. We ha- had a writing session not too long ago with an, uh, an artist. Um, and, uh, Andrew Max got a great voice mm. and uh, his from a conversation he said I heard a lady say the other day I'm going to probably die on this bar stool and I looked at him and he looked at me and Scott Barrier was the co-writer I said I'm, we're going to write that yeah. we're writing that and we got a really cool song called Die on This Bar Stool I'm going to record that song yeah actually. you should yeah I'm going to record it it's so funny you got those antennas up and there's always something or sometimes it's a sign sometimes it's yeah. something and right. you go, it sparks it in you right mm-hmm. then uh, you put it in your book and you got to capture it yeah write it down on your phone. that's the great thing about mm-hmm. everyone the, the, you know everyone's got a phone on them you can just notice yeah and also like the voice memo app yeah mine is so unorganized <laughs> It's dreadful and like it just like picks up like locations. Yeah. And I did a work tape a couple of weeks ago before we went to the studio, sent mm-hmm. it sent it to the session leader and got all the charts laid out in the studio. Mm-hmm. Going through and I'm like, what song is that? <laughs> and it's Frothy Monkey. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I I stay right around the corner from from the frothy monkey. Frothy there monkey, you, go. you got your frothy monkey gospel. And um, yeah, it came up as that. I was like, what on earth? What is this song? <laughs> but no, yeah, I definitely need to organize that. But um, that, I mean, I love I love that voice memo app because if you're having a conversation with someone, or if you overhear, you can be sat in Waffle House. Yeah, and let me some Waffle House. Just hit, yeah. just hit, hit record. record yeah, one turn, and yeah. then pick it up later and be like, oh. you know, I find it useful. I'm laying in bed. Yeah, and it come in that line. Line will come to you. Oh, that's what I'm looking for, 
And if you fall asleep, chances are you are not going to remember that. Yeah. Maybe you will like three weeks later. You go, hey, you know, I had a light in there because that's happened to me. And it's completely gone. But if you turn over and just and get it in there recorded or something, that's kind of cool. Um, you co-wrote a song. And I love how you take a, a twist to something. I, I'm listening to your music this morning. And I think it's a song you wrote with Greg Crow called Truck Stop. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's a song you can play play for us, but uh, what I love about it is, um, you know, you think about trucks. We're not talking about, in a way, we are, but we're not really talking about a pilot or a flying J or even a Bucky's. We're talking about you're telling your truck to stop. Yeah, and I loved that play on words, and and I just wanted to talk more about that song and maybe hear it if you could. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'll more than happy to play it for you. But good, um, good. it came about. We had the, he had this. It, it was great. This right? story. Was it, it was. Yeah, it okay. was. Yeah. It was. Um, it was one of the first ones we, we started writing together. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's this story about a boy and a girl grew up tiny town, um, and the girl's got big dreams. She wants to leave. She wants to get out. She wants to go to LA. She needs to chase something. If she's an actor or a musician or something, I'm not sure. But mm-hmm. she works at this diner, and she's saving up all her money, all her tips. And her and her boyfriend, they got this beat up old truck and they're fixing it up when they get time and she puts a lot of money into it and then in the truck finally gets fixed up. Mm-hmm. And she either decides to, to stay or leave. And she leaves. Mm. Leaving the boy back home, heartbroken, he couldn't go with her. Yeah. Um probably got a job, you know? Yeah. Um and he's just instead of it be instead of the song being voicing into a girl we had it voicing into the truck that she left in to stop and turn around and bring it back to him love it that's how to write a song I'll tell you that's great that is great right some folks call a white trash she grew up in a trailer park She saved her tips from the diesel Down her where she'd smile and play in the park Bought a beat up silver auto Fixed her up on our days off She flipped a coin when we were done And the West Coast won the toss On truck stop that girl make a turn around we'll come back home right now instead of being LA bound make her take a second look in your rear view we'll change her mind somehow truck stop that girl make a turn Drown it out. Let her take her back in time and make her wanna cry right out loud. Truck stop. Hack her. Make her turn around. We'll come back home. Right now, instead of being LA bound, make her take a second look in your head. We'll change her mind somehow Truck stop That girl Make a turn Turn around Oh yeah Would you Down. We'll 
truck stop That girl Make her turn around To come back home Right now Instead of being L.A. bound Make her take a second look In your hair view To change her mind somehow Truck stop That is some writing and some singing. Oh my gosh, that was incredible! Thank you so <laughs> Thank much. You. It's a great song, you know. Singing to the truck, not the S- gal. Singing to the truck. Isn't that something? That's an interesting twist. Very cool. Love it. That should be a single, my friend. Is that out? Will it be? It will be with the studio. It will be musicians. It's done. Good. <laughs> it's done. I'm saying that's a hit. Okay, that really is, uh, and I look forward to that coming out real soon. Great song. Really Thank you. Is. Hey, what's on the Brooke Ellingworth playlist these days? What are you listening to? Um, dude, I'm listening to a load of Kip Moore. Yeah. Um, you like him? I'm a big fan. Really? Big fan. Love his writing. Love his attitude towards everything. Oh, yeah. Um, it really is. Killer voice. Uh-huh. And hell, I actually just saw him play at the Ascend Amphitheater the oh, other did week. You? Wow. Um, great gig. Uh, it was him and Billy Currington. Oh, Billy. And um, yeah. yeah, great gig. I bet. Uh I'm always listening to the Cadillac Three. I love that band. Um, They're great. They actually, they, actually, they, just, dude, they just played the Royal Albert Hall in London. Did they really? Sod's, wow. Sod's law for me. I come out to Nashville. My favorite band <laughs> from Nashville goes to the UK. Oh, the UK. <laughs> that's funny how that works. <laughs> oh no, that's terrible. Wow. Um, I'm always listening. I'm listening to a bunch of Lainey Wilson. Yeah, you gotta love her right now. She, I think she's the queen of country. Yeah, right now, the, new, the new queen. I, yeah, she really is. She's like yeah. she's definitely going to be. Yeah, absolutely. Entertainer um, of the year, and she's and winning she all the it. awards. And... I, I just saw her play before I came out to, Did to Nashville. Yeah, she played the uh, the O2 Kentish Town Forum, which wow. is one of my favorite venues in London. Wow. And um, yeah, I saw Brothers Osborne the first first time I was there. I saw the Cadillac Three and Brothers Osborne together. Wow. Yeah. What a show that must have been. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, they bought out the Brothers Osborne with them on tour. Um, it was like their first ever time going out there. Wow. And a couple of years later, they're opening up for Brothers Osborne. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Maybe yeah. uh, someday they'll be opening up for you. We hope anyway. I hope so. Wouldn't that be cool? I mean, dude, I just want to open for someone. So it was the beginning of this year. I had a date and... It was it was a it was a good night. We were at this like a dive rock and roll bar, <laughs> known for being a bit dodgy in the middle of Oxford. It's great, and um, we're drinking beers and we're shooting shots and we're playing pool. This girl comes up to us. She goes, "Are you guys married?" Hmm. Really? I was like, uh, uh, "My date was just like, yeah, we are." I was like, oh, like, <laughs> See, okay. I would have been the same way. And um, played them on. And throughout the whole night, all these people kept coming up to us and that we were meeting and whatnot. And like whoever we spoke to, they were like, are you married? Hmm. I mean, who asks that? I mean, who asks that? Exactly. It was like I had a sign on my back that said, we're married, ask us. <laughs> then we go to another bar. And we're getting some drinks. Mm-hmm. Girl next to us at the bar gets chatting to the person I'm with and she goes, are you guys married? Oh my goodness. What is happening? Um, it didn't work out. And uh, a couple of weeks later, um, I was telling someone about it. They were like, oh, how's like, you know, life and what's going on? And I was telling them about this night. I was like, huh. Married for one night. Married for one night. It's kind of a cool story. Mm. Um, so You yeah, had to write a song about it. I had to. You had to. I had to. And, uh, and then I played it to the band, and my band were just like, "This is this song's great." What? So yeah, married for one night. It's a solo right. Okay. Um, well, actually, no, that's a lie. It's not a solo right. Uh, I had my buddy Hux work on the uh, the bridge and some of the composition with me, 
And um, yeah, that bridge is high. I've got to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Those two ways were calling it And it wasn't right top pocket Another round on our tag Two beers, two shots, and that is that Sparks flew the haze of the room Purple rain, Hendrix too Little wild turkey got us loose we got nothing to lose We are married for one night Some would say that it wasn't right But it suited us for a time You'd think we'd both lost our minds Cause we got married for one night We are married for one night Yes, we did They dressed together is what we said Our eyes locked, our lips said the rest This little bit of me in those brown eyes You got lost in mind trying to make it out alive No wedding dress, no suit or tie Couple jean jackets on a rainy night Black cup of coffee come morning light You in my arms one last time Cause we got married for one night Some would say that it wasn't right But it suited us for a time You think we both lost our minds Cause we got hitched under neon light Love moves fast when it's in plain sight We drank through all those first steps Plastic tie ring and a jukebox full of memories We got married for one night This was gonna last forever In a different life We can make it out together Cause we are married for one night Some would say that it wasn't right But it suited us for that time Wanted you to be mine Cause we got hitched under neon light Love moves fast when it's in plain sight We drank through all those first steps Plastic tiring and a jukebox full of memories We got married for one night We are married for one night Cause we are married for one night We are married for one night Yes, we did mm. And that's awesome. My friend, you have got a range to your voice, too. I mean, you can go into that smoothly into that falsetto and right back. Oh, thank you. And a great writer, too. Yeah. Thanks, man. Do you realize, since you played at the local uh, a couple of rounds after me, I'm going to tell everybody I opened up for you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't wreck that for me, okay? <laughs> it's a feather in my hat. I love that. <laughs> What's next for you this summer? What's going cool. on? Um, I'm going back. I fl- I fly back to England tomorrow, mm-hmm. um, and then a bunch of shows this summer. June is wow. looking busy. That and I want to just write a load and like spend the summer making content 
and yeah. then do some surfing and paddleboarding and stuff in between. Nice. Uh, <laughs> you, you like know, to surf? I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just is like, there surf know, in Oxford? No, it's like about the nearest surf's like three and a half hours. Three away. and a half hours. Um, Worth the trip. Oh yeah, yeah. Do big, you write, big time. Do you write beach music at all? Uh, the closest thing I've got to a beach song is probably like Margarita on the Dash. <laughs> I, I heard that song. Yeah, that's a great song. Which is about a hula girl, not the drink. Not the um, drink. That's it right. It started off being about the drink and then it ended up being the hula girl. Well, that's what I figured. Certainly you're not promoting drinking and driving. No, exactly. That's the, that was, that was the, uh, yeah, that yeah. was, that was the thing. That song's streaming out there along it's with all there. your other stuff yeah. too. So check him out. Brooke Ellingworth. It's good to meet you, my friend. All no, the best to you. Thank I you think so you're much. doing everything right. You really are. Uh, and uh, safe travels to you and everything. Okay? Thanks for having me, Next Dave. time you come through, you're welcome. Come back. I'll be here. We hope you enjoyed this intimate glimpse into the world of songwriting and found inspiration in the stories shared by our talented guests. Remember, the magic of music lies not only in the notes and chords, but in the emotions and experiences woven into every lyric. Until next time, keep listening. Keep creating and keep the melodies alive.